Steve, what's up? Come and look, the mayor's fault. Oh, fantastic. But I can't. What did Dad see? Come on, we'll go the back way. Come on, jump up. Morning on another sunny day. Feeling good in a most exciting way. Doing things and being with the ones you love. Just be. Share it with the ones you love Cause a little bit of love goes a long way A little bit of love goes a long, long way Blue fire lady All she needs is love Blue fire lady Love is just enough when you're young, when you're free, when you've still got room oh, to breathe. Look at her, Jen. Look at that head. She's a born champion. Very few are as good as Diamond. There aren't many horses good enough to win a gold medal for Australia. And few riders, Mr Bartlett. Yeah, but with Diamond I had the best, the best in the world. Come on, let's go. She wants her breakfast and it's about time we had ours. You look after her, old girl, you hear? Cause a little bit of love goes a long way A little bit of love goes a long, long way Just about giving up hope. Everybody told me the old girl had never fall. Funny thing, I had a feeling she'd be right this year. <laughs> Give old Mother Nature time and she can fix everything. <laughs> Nature? <laughs> yeah, and the new vet. Yeah. More tea, Jenny. No thanks, sir. Dad will be wondering where I am. Is he still upset about you coming here, Jim? Yes. Oh, it's nothing to do with you. It's just that he hates horses. If only he could see you ride. He'd change his mind. No chance. He won't even let me near a horse. Surely you must realise you've got talent. And if you trained hard, you could take on the world's best. I only wish I had it in me. You know how much I love working with show horses. But Dad won't even have a horse on the place. When he found out I was coming here to ride for you, he was furious. I've tried to speak to him, but he just won't listen. You must understand your father's point of view. I know how Dad feels. But he won't talk to me about it. Anyway. If we hadn't come to Australia, I never would have met the famous Bartlett's. <laughs> I must go. Dad will come looking for me. See ya. Bye. 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 Oh, morning, Dad. You're up early. Where have you been? I went to see the Bartlett's. I thought I told you to keep away from there. I'm sorry. But Diamond gave birth to her foal. We've all waited so long. I, I don't care why you went. The fact is you deliberately disobeyed me. But they're my friends. They're nice people. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, Dad. You won't let me visit the Bartlett's because they let me ride their horses. But can't you see, I love working with horses and I'm good at it. I don't care how good you are. You will keep away from the Bartlett's and their horses. Is that clear? I know why you hate horses, Dad, but what happened to Mum was an accident. It could just as easily... I told you never to mention that. Mum was killed on a horse by a fool in a car. So why blame horses? I've warned you before about defying me. 
If you go near the Bartlett's again, I'll send you to boarding school in Melbourne. Now get on with your work. Yes, Dad. Down and Mum needs your help. Dad and I are looking for the vet. What was that Bartlett kid doing here? Diamond sick. I've got to go give Mrs. Bartlett a hand. You're not going. I haven't got time to argue, Dad. I promised Steve I'd help with the mare and foal. Jenny. Oh, is she, Jack? She should be all right now. I've given her a shot. Temperature's dropping already. Well. Inside and pack your things, young lady. I phoned the boarding school. They can take you today. I gave you fair warning.
got your letter. You sounded unhappy. I am. Terribly. Is it your studies? No. I have a few problems with maths. <laughs> Doesn't everybody? I have to talk to you about next year. I don't want to go straight to university. I want to get a job and work for a while. Degrees take a long time to get, Jenny. The sooner you start, the better. I know. But my exams will be over next week, and I'll be 18. Old enough to legally make my own decisions. Try and understand. I gather this uh, job will give you time for horses. I hope so. It's what I want. Can I have a room, please? Certainly. How long? Only one night, I think. Fine. Fill in the form. Excuse me, are you Mr. Curtis? Yes, certainly. I'm the new groom, Jenny Gregg. You what? I mean, you're a girl. Mm. I could possibly, I mean, there's no way. But your letter said I had the job. Yeah, but your letter didn't say you were a girl. The advertisement said stud groom required experience with horses and cattle. There was no mention of not being female. But I thought, look, there's no way my missus, another woman in the place. I'm sorry, girlie. I need a man. After all, it's a man's job. Look, it's twenty dollars for your fare and another twenty for your trouble. I'm sorry. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
tell me where Mr. McIntyre, the trainer, is? Yes, he's over at the rail. Mr. McIntyre? That's me. I've come about the job as a stable hand. The ad did say male or female. That's right. Can you ride? Well, yes, since I was a child. And I have helped school show horses. What about race horses? Ever worked them? No, but I'd like to. They all look so well cared for. Takes a darn lot of hard work to keep them like that. Well, come on, we'll see if you can sit on a horse. Hey, Charlie! Yes, boss? Bring our black star. Okay, Mr. Now, see that sand track? I want you to trot the horse around there once, can him around at half pace once. Now, Betty, give this girl your skull cap. Here, put this on. Regulation. There he is. Walk him around first to make sure you can handle him. OK, jump on. You should get that thing on a track. You'd like that, wouldn't you? The way she's handling him, I'd say this kid really knows how to handle horses. Riding school chicks before. They're all right on a quiet horse. We give them a cranky one, they go to pieces. And no, we'll see. We'll see, all right. <laughs> <laughs> going on. Get up and get those stalls finished. Right, boss. And come on, the rest of you get moving. You're not at a rodeo. Watch him when you first go onto the track, miss. He's a bit toey then. After that, just kid to him and he'll be all right. I'm Gus. I'm Jenny. Jenny Gray. And boss wants a word. Oh, and uh, well done. Thanks. You'll do. Month's trial, OK? Award rates, find your own accommodation. Start Monday, my stables. Address is in the ad. 4.30 a.m.
Yeah? I was just looking for a room. We've always got rooms. Come in. You have a room to let. Chig. Yeah, come on in, man. The rent's on us. I think I have the wrong address. Thank you. Mrs. Uh... So you want a room? Okay. Why you no live with your mama and papa, a young girl like you? I am 18. You look a nice girl. Okay. Come in, we talk. What's your name? Jenny, Jenny Gray. What's your job? I'm a stable hand with a racehorse trainer. Oh, it's a stable. Oh, that's a no good job for a girl. Horses. When he was here, my husband, Francesco, he love a horses too. He drive a taxi all day, all night. He, he make a lot of money. We say for a trip home. What happened? You want to know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. One day, a customer gave him a good tip for a horse. He take the money, he put it on the horse. I tell you what happened. Goodbye, horse, goodbye, money, goodbye, Francesco. Horses, no good. But it's not the horse's fault when people lose their money. Some people enjoy betting. That's the truth. Francesco, he bet on anything. He's stupido. OK, you can stay. Thanks. You want a breakfast in the morning? Well, I have to start at half past four. Half past four in the morning? It's nearly midnight. You cook it for yourself, all right? Fine. Thank you, Mrs. Hey, everybody, they call me Mrs. G. When you come home from work, I cook you a good big Italian pasta. Hey, Barry, you are early for once. G'day. I want you to meet Miss Jenny Gray. She's going to stay with us. Hi, Gray. Hello. One day, Barry going to be big shot. Ah, I'm studying engineering. How about you? I just left school and I decided to take a job for a while. You're English, aren't you? Yes. Your folks here? My father has a farm near Listerfield. Ah, beautiful country up there. Beautiful people, too. Hey, you get out of you, cheeky boy. You leave Miss Jenny alone. What's she think of my house? You making goo-goo eyes so quick. Are you going to get clean and then we eat? OK, OK. I'm sorry. Let me know if you need any help moving in. I was going to hire a taxi truck. Ah, cost you a fortune. I've got an old Morris. I'll lend you a hand. Tomorrow afternoon? Are you sure? About four. Barry work very hard in the garage. Pay for school. He 
really nice boy. You're a very pretty girl. Plenty nice boys make goo goo eyes at you. Come on, I'll show you your room. Goo goo eyes. Can I get her a pump? Okay, go again. What's your new job? Working at a racing stables at Caulfield. Really? I thought all stable hands were skinny little blokes who talk through their noses. No, not nowadays. Plenty of skinny little girls work in stables too. Why that job? I want to take up show jumping seriously, and this way I can get some practice and be paid for it. Any good at this horse thing? Oh, I think so. But I have to find out for sure. And your father won't change his mind? No chance. a lot. And now, young lady, my account. It's going to cost you one cup of coffee. It's a deal. So you want to be a vet? No, I just wanted to be able to help on the farm. And now? I don't know. If I can help. Hey, okay, you cheeky boy. That's enough. No more. Not in my house. Right, these two horses are yours. Red Sun and Big Sky. Now, I want you to look after these horses properly. You know, these horses pay a lot of money to have them trained, and I expect them to look as though they're getting their money's worth. You take orders from me, and when I'm out here, Charlie's for me. Hey, Charlie. Yes, boss. Show this girl where everything is, what gear she can use. Then get the first line into the float and out the track. A gust for crying out loud, get that gear on the two-year-old, and let's get moving. Your lunchtime, we don't hurry up. Come along, Charlie Martin, the foreman. Get away, you useless old beggar. I'm Jenny Gray. You're another one of these riding school champs who think they know everything about horses. <laughs> no. I... Well, we'll soon find out how much you don't know. You can use that skull, okay? Belonged to the last riding school chick we had here. Only lasted a week. One of the Colts gave her a uh, fright, so she ran home for the money. Which is my gear? Use that saddle. The brothers got their names on. Those two horses you've been given to look after are real scrubbers. Big Sky's got some chance of running last. The other one's gonna break down for sure. You know, uh, owners are very generous with their money if their horses win. If you've got good horses to look after, you make a lot of extra dough. Now, uh, if you and me were friends, I could make sure you got good horses to look after. No, thank you. Listen, stuck up. Charlie, get those darn horses in the float. Coming, boss. You'll learn.
Suppose that creep Charlie's been giving you the uh, look after me and I'll look after you routine. None of us like him much, especially the way he crawls to Mr. Mac. He took the foreman's job from Gus, you know. I like Gus. He seems nice. Mr. Mac says he's too soft on horses. OK, OK, cut the cackle. This isn't a royal show. Now get those horses finished. G'day, Bobby. He used to guard the stables for Mr. Mac's father. He's a bit deaf now. Charlie wants to get rid of him. Says he upsets the horses. <laughs> this old dog's forgotten more about horses than Charlie will ever know. Red Sun's got a lot of heat in his leg. Tell the boss, not me. I've told him that horse will break down unless he's rested and treated properly. Well, why hasn't he done anything about it? Ask him. Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Red Sun's got a lot of heat in his leg. Yeah, I know. Shall I put a poultice on it? No, just keep working him. When I exercised him this morning, he felt very lame. Maybe we should phone the vet. I said just keep working him. What if he breaks down? Listen, girl, if that three-legged croc breaks down, then too bad. I haven't got time to nurse unsound horses. Lame horses can't win races. If a horse can't stand training, then it's no good to me or its owner. Now do as I say and keep working him. Yes, sir. Get out of the way, you useless old mutt. How'd you go? He said... Don't tell me I know. Keep working him. If he breaks down, too bad. That's the way it is in the game these days. Horses like Red Sun who can't pay their way are no good to anyone. But horses are just as sensitive as people. You and I know that. But try telling the likes of Charlie. A stable's got to be run like a factory and that's that. You can't beat the system. I'd better get on with it. I'll see you. Here we go. You sound really fed up with this racing business. It's different to the show in Barry. They're the horse and rider form a team. At McIntyre's, it's just big business. And they all accept that. Hey, what you need is a night out. When's your day off? Sunday, so I can go out Saturday night. Great. You and I are going to have a night on the town. Hey, what's this big night out? You tell me. Oh, I was thinking of something wildly extravagant, something fantastically exotic like... Mm, train ride to the movies? Okay. 
But you'll be home by 12, otherwise plenty of trouble, all right? Okay. Okay. Oh, Jenny, I forget. Let her come for you today. It might be from Dad. From our neighbours, the Bartlett's. Diamond's Fold will be a two-year-old soon. They're hoping to sell her as a racehorse. Hey, come on, it's not all that bad. I'm just a bit homesick, that's all. OK, look, there's a good movie on telly tonight. All that seed. Da, telly. All the bad girls with the big baboons. <laughs> Okay, put him in his stall. Don't worry about him. He'll never race again. What'll they do with him? Uh, the owner will sell him at the auctions. Got too many horses to worry about this one. No one wants a broken down gelding. End up in a can. It's dogs me. Got your message. I'm not at all happy about taking this new filly on, Bill. Now listen, Mac, Diamond Queen is a great mare. She might be a bit cranky, but she won the Melbourne Cup. And I reckon she can produce one just as good as herself. Now either you train her daughter, or you don't train any of my horses. Simple as that. I mean it, Mac. Now you know the chances of Diamond Queen producing one as good as herself is a million to one. I tell you, Bill, that Diamond breed just no good at all. Now listen, Mac, it's my horses and my money keeping you in business. You give that filly a try. She's no good, I'll put her in the sales ring. But give her a try first. Get a transport and I'll give her a character reference. Charlie, calm those colts down. lunatic will have every horse in the stable going berserk. Well, it's your job to calm her down and get her ready for racing. That's what I'm paying you for. But why this nuisance? Buy yourself a decent horse. Give yourself a chance. I mean, it costs as much to feed a champion as it does to feed a rat bag like this. Well, I know Diamond can produce a good one. And this just might be it. Demon, get in the store. Uh, well, don't you worry. You'll see. Excuse me? Yes, girlie. What's her name? I've called a blue fire lady. Tell you she's mad, boss. She just hates people. Well, you know, you saw her throw me at the track. Yeah, just like a mother and the rest of the darn breed. You've only got one chance with that filly. She's a one-man horse, just like her mother. Oh, this is 1977, Gus. If a horse can't be part of a team, it's no good to me. Training's a business. I'm a horse trainer, not a head doctor for scatty horses. Look, Peters is expecting results. A Charlie's scared of her, and the filly knows it. Why don't you leave it to that new girl to look after? 
It's your only chance of getting at a race. Look, the yearling sales are coming up soon. You're expecting Peters to dig into his pocket and buy you a couple of good colts? But he won't. Unless you make some attempt with a filly. Charlie, give that darn filly to the new girl. Yes, boss. With pleasure. Haven't you got rid of this darn useless dog yet? I didn't know. Well, you know now. Get rid of it. It's a racing stable, not a dog's refuge home. Yes, boss. Come on, you dirty old flea bag. Come on. Move. Get out now. Move. <laughs> I'll just be a minute. Can I speak to you for a moment, please, Mr. McIntyre? What is it this time? Can I have Bobby? What do you mean, can you have him? I'd like to keep him. <sighs> I'll take him home so he won't be any trouble to you anymore. That old dog's nearly 15. He's deaf as a post. No, Charlie's taken to the vet. It's time he was put down. Anyway, you'll have enough to worry about with that new filly. I'm giving her to you to look after. Now forget about the dog. Go back to work and let me get on with mine. Please, sir. <sighs> Good Lord, girl, if it means that much to you, take the darn dog. But I don't want to see him hanging around here. Now will you get on with your work? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Animal lovers will be the end of me. Please, Mrs. G. He won't be any trouble and I'll pay for his keep. No, no dogs. But he's got nowhere to go. No one wants him. No. If no one wants him, that must mean he's no good for nothing. But, Mrs. G, he's such No, a... I said no dogs. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. G. This is becoming a very rough neighbourhood. You could use a good watchdog. You mind your business, Mr. Cheeky Smarty Pants. But, Mrs. G, think how safe you'd feel with a trained guard dog to look after you. What do you mean, trained guard dog? That's right, Mrs. G. This dog is famous all over town. In fact, they hire him out to guard all the favourites before the big races. This is a really important dog. Where is this bigger time guard dog? He's out the front. I'll get him. How come you know so much, Mr. Cheeky Smarty Pants? Everyone's heard of this dog. If he's such a good guard dog, how I know he don't bite me, eh? Because he never bites kind, lovable people, Mrs. G. Ah, get away with your Google eyes, you first class con man. Okay, mister. Come here. What's the matter, you? I said, come here. If you're going to stay here, I want you to know who to guard. I'm afraid he's a bit deaf. You have to pat your knee, like this, so he can see you want him to come. Okay, mister. You stop at the goo goo eyes. You could stay. Oh, thank you. Hey, stop at the fuss. Hey, hey. If this is guard dog deaf, how come he can hear burglars? You tell me, eh? He. he smells them. He sniffs them out. Don't you, fella? No. I think you old timer, nobody wants no more. We all get it that way. <laughs> hey, Mr. Dog, you stop with the goo goo eyes. Hey, you like a ravioli? Hey, like my cooking. You know, 
I think this is a pretty smart dog. <laughs> You're never quite that lunatic. The sooner she gets aboard, the better. Before she hurts somebody. Daddy. Let me make it hard for both of us. Good night, Mrs. G. Good night. Uh, good night to you two. Hey, you'll be on by 12 o'clock, you remember? Or else there'll be trouble. Hey, hey, Mr. Dog, you hungry? You like a salami sandwich? Hey. Trusty Steve, the tram awaits. Why, thank you, Prince John. For ugly old stable hand, you sure turned into a beautiful princess. Well, if you're the prince, you must have started life as a frog. Come on, we'll miss the tram. Mrs. G's right, you are a first class combat. <laughs> Fancy an ice cream? Hmm, thanks. Well, if it isn't our collective of useless animals, all dressed up. Want to come for a ride with the boss, sweetie? I'm waiting for a friend. A friend? I didn't think you were the friendly type. Go away. Listen, stuck up. Who do you think you are? You keep treating me like a fool, and I'll make your life miserable for you. I treat you like a fool because you behave like one. You're a little bully who's not much good at his job. I'll fix you right up from now on. Every cranky, bare-legged horse that comes in the stable, I'll line up for you to look after. <laughs> I'll fix smarties like you. Smarties like who? Huh. Who's this one of your flash riding school mates? Hey, come on. I think you better tell a lady you're sorry. What lady? Come on, Barry, let's go. Come on, Shorty. I said you better say the lady you're sorry. Drop dead, creep! Now listen, I'm bigger than you, and I've got a black belt. So come on, tell the lady you're sorry. Go on, say, I'm sorry, lady. I'm sorry. I said, I'm sorry, lady. I'm sorry, lady. Did you get a nice boy if you try? <laughs> Good night, everyone. You dirty big. I know you did karate. I don't. All I said was I have a black belt. I do. Here's the trap. That girl's got Blue Fire Lady going along nicely, mate. Ah, it's a long way to the racetrack. I think the filly's ready for education at the barriers. Eh, yeah, could be right. 
I'll try it out at the starting gate tomorrow. We'll see just how good a job that girl has done. take one of the others in first. When she sees it's safe, then she'll go too. Get a hold of her. Pack her up. Right, Mr. Mack. It's all right, Betty. I'll get off the leader in. Come on. Just hold it a second till she has a look. There you are. It's all right. No one's going to hurt you. Come on. Okay, let him go. Okay. That crazy animal. Are you all right? She okay? What the hell happened? Well, she was going beautifully, and she just swerved off the track. Just about had enough of this horse. I know I can get her to race. She just needs to trust me. Yeah. You right? Here we go. Right? Well, you've done it. I'd say she's ready to race. She'll be all right, as long as they take her easy. Riding was supposed to be fun. I've had it. Come on, you've earned a break. Why don't you just leave them? They'll be okay. They won't wander off. 
I don't think I've quite got the hang of it yet. The horse wants to go one way, and I'm trying to go the other. You've got to let them know what you want to do. So you finally won your battle with the horse. Not a battle. More a test of patience. Because of her breeding, everyone treated Lady like an outlaw. So she behaved like one. When's her first race? Saturday. That'll be her real test. Strange rider in a strange place. You're not happy, are you? I don't know. I'm not sure if I've done Lady a favour by getting her quiet enough to race. Why? People like McIntyre and Peters treat horses as racing machines. Lady worked for me because I treated her as an individual. Ah, you shouldn't worry. You've done your best. Hey, have you heard from your father lately? No. He never answers my letters. You miss him a lot, don't you? Any time I can help, Jen. Thanks, I know. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Victoria Amateur Turf Club, welcome to racing at Caulfield. The weather fine, the track is officially good, and if you have your race books handy now, we'll check all the racing throughout the prep. Yeah, well, it's a big day for you, Mac. Three in and two favourites. What do you reckon about Black Knight? Oh, I should go close. Track work's been spot on. What about my filly in the sixth? I still say that blue fire lady's nothing but trouble. She nearly killed the girl looks after her. But does she have a chance? Well... Got Clegg on a bill, one of the best whip riders around. He won't take any nonsense. If you've got any ability at all, Clegg will get it out of her. Well, I've got to give you full marks, Mac. At least you try. If she doesn't pay her way now, you can kick her out. But I still reckon that old mare can produce at least one good one. She might. Not this one. Well, come on, I want to get something on Black Knight. Prince of Mura is 100 to 10. Prince of Mura, 277. number four, act again. First race on the program, one scratching, number seven, Alan's Hope. Leaving Sky limit, $12 to one, 283. 17 and a half to five, Silent Death, 282. Black Knight, 900 to 400, 284. Thank you. Price on the board. Here they are, four to one, Silent Death.
Now the last of the runners has gone into the stalls. They're all set for the first event on the program. Stand. Racing this time and Count John away well from Jim's Hope. Black Knight got away nicely and then Day In followed by Jolly Lad. Into the straight now and Count John the leader with Jim's Hope and Black Knight fighting on on the outside followed by Miss Park and Day In. But Count John's going to be much too good. He's striding right away from them now and Count John's gone on to win it easily from Jim's Hope. Miss Park, third just in front of Black Knight, Day In, Jolly Lad, Hope. I know, I saw the race. Big villain and last of all is Dingo. Yes, sir, one of the Slow down from Paul Micah. Race by Mr. K. Hillier, trained by B. Johnson, Edwards, written by Ima McDonald. Second, number four, Jim's Hope. And third was number two, Miss Park. He just wasn't himself, Mr. Mike. Something seems to have upset him today. Yeah. Number four, Jim's Hope, 85 cents. And number two, Miss Park, just played nine and six. Vanilla, seven dollars sixty. And the trio in the race, ninety-four dollars even. They're the totes pending correct weight on the maiden to you. You know what this breed's like, so I don't want you to take any nonsense. Give her a darn good hiding. Peters will see she's not worth the trouble. Okay, Mr. Mack, you're the boss. Well, I've got a hundred on this horse at 50 to 1, so it looks like the book is sheer Mac's opinion. Do your best, Kelvin, and if this horse wins, then uh, there's a little something extra for you, all right? Thank you, Mr. Peters, I appreciate that. Thank you. Remember, Jaru's boss. Don't be afraid to hit her. She right. needs it. Now the runners are about to leave the mounting enclosure on their way to the 1200 metre barrier for the running of the TAA stakes. Time to start in about four minutes. Treat her kindly and she'll be all right. She's just frightened. Lively, Mac? Yeah, lively and useless. Yeah, <laughs> Clegg will earn his money for this ride. Now the runners are moving into the stalls for the TAA stakes. Starting to come along quite well. Wilson's pride has gone up to the inside position. Bob Ray is ready with green sword and fair enough. Sticky's hope just goes in now. Waiting on about four or five of them, blue fire ladies on her toes, getting back behind the other runners. Now coming up towards the line is Pine Duke. Pine Duke almost in as they close the stall behind it. And it's Blue Fire Lady and the Turk to go in. All Blue Fire Lady pulled away suddenly, then nearly unseated, Clegg. Now the attendants are going across to the Turk, taking it forward. And we wait only now on Blue Fire Lady. The jockey Kelvin Clegg having a lot of trouble with Blue Fire Lady. She's uh, not interested at all in going into the stalls. Blue Fire Lady swings away, Clegg giving her a couple of cracks with the whip Stop there to try and make her go. And Clegg gives it a hit across the neck to try and Stop hitting her. It down. Now another effort being made. Please stop hitting her. 
Bank trying to master the filly. I think he has now. The attendants bring her up. Oh, she swings sideways there, nearly collected one of them. She's obviously still very green, doesn't know a lot about this business. Now they're bringing her forward. Blue fire lady's gone in and they're all set to start. Sticky's hope sitting back a little. The Turk moving in the stalls and blue fire lady still pretty toey on the outside. Mr. Morrow giving them time to settle down. They're off now. Settling down, Miss Trim about a length and a half in front of Sticky's head, followed by the Turk out wide and then Wilson's pride. Bobray about a length further back in company with Fine Duke and then Green Sword, second last Blue Fire Lady and fair enough last of all. Coming down towards the turn now, Miss Trim still the leader just in front of Sticky's Hope. They were followed then by the Turk and now pulled out wide as Blue Fire Lady making the turn very awkwardly however and taking the Turk out wide. In the straight Miss Trim in front of the Turk coming at them too. He's going for the whip now on Blue Fire Lady to try and keep her straight. It's Blue Fire Lady and a vigorous punishment with the Turk going stride for stride followed by Milson's Pride. About halfway down the straight now, nothing between the Turk, the outside, and Blue Fire Lady with Cleek throwing everything at Blue Fire Lady. They're going together from Milson's Pride and then Green Sword and Fair Enough. With 100 metres to go now and under vigorous riding, it's Blue Fire Lady just in front of the Turk. On the inside, Milson's Pride struggling on, but it's the Turk and Blue Fire Lady. Cleek throwing everything at this one, Blue Fire Lady, she's just in front. Stride for stride, they go to the line. Blue Fire Lady under desperate punishment now from Cleek just in front of the Turk. The Turk coming at her again on the outside. Blue Fire Lady and the Turk absolutely locked together. And the long shot, Blue Fire Lady's won about a head to the Turk. Milson's Pride third. You shifty devil, a 50 to 1 shot. Good on you, Mac. Go on, let's get down there. Ah, do you change your luck. The winner, number nine, Blue Fire Lady, is raced by Mr. and Mrs. Bill Peters. Trained by C.H. McIntyre, a chestnut filly by Prince Charming out of Diamond Queen, and was ridden by Kelvin Clegg. Second, number five, the Turk, J. Betts, and third, number one, Milson's Pride, well done. ridden by A. Talene. Well, I threw everything at her and she, she acted like a champion. Good. As soon as the weight's right, hose her down and take her home. Congratulations, Bill. The graduation cup is being well won. Thank you very much. And it certainly has been a thrill for one of my horses to win the TAA graduation stakes. Pretty good win, eh, Mac? Well, certainly did it the hard way. Craig gave that filly a real thrashing for horse having its first start. Are you happy with that? Couldn't be happier. Craig wrote precisely my instructions. Off the record, gentlemen, the horse is a real crank and needs a good hiding. You wouldn't have had much on that at 50 to 1, would you, Mr. Peters? Oh, it was only a small cent of it bet, and uh, at 50 to 1, you don't have to lay out much. But <laughs> you better not print that. <laughs> right, but you can quote me as saying, I give full marks to Mac for having the patience and know-how and handling a horse has been very, very difficult. Thanks. Uh, you might let us know if it's going to happen again. With a pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks a lot. Very much. <laughs> Bill Peters, you cunning devil. A 50 to one shot and you never told me. Well, I didn't think the filly had it in her case. You're so lucky. We spent a fortune on our horses, never had a city win. Well, thanks to Mac here, this could be a good one. Yeah, well, I'm jealous. And the only thing that'll cure me is a glass of champagne. Oh, that's easily fixed, isn't it? Hey, Harry, two bottles of bubbly. Now, come on, Mac, the champagne's on me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you and your filly sure made them eat their words today. I'm sorry, Gus. I just can't feel happy about it. In fact, I'm ashamed to be part of this whole miserable business. Look at her. I helped them do that. Yeah, you gave her a hiding, all right. But you can't blame him. That's what they pay for. That's his job. He didn't have to beat her. 
She would have given everything she had. I'll get some liniment. I'll take the sting out of it. She won't feel much like her dinner tonight, that's for sure. Time you knock off, girl. What are you waiting around for? I've been caring for Lady. How is our scatty little filly? <laughs> our scatty winning little filly. <laughs> <laughs> She's sick. Sick and sore. She's off her food and suffering from shock. Shock? Yes, shock. Due to being beaten by that whip-happy jockey. Under your orders. Now, you just listen to well, me. Hang on. Wait, wait a minute. Now, listen, girlie, you know we had to get a strong rider to handle that filly. And uh, what's more, you did a great job getting her on the track. So, yeah. Here's a little Christmas present. I wouldn't touch your filthy money if I was starving. You treated Lady abominably today. That's nothing new. Charlie's allowed to run this place while you sit in your office playing Mr. Big. You, you, get, you get out. Don't worry, I'm going. But first, I'd like to say something to you, Mr. McIntyre. Your horses will never go well for you, because you're not a horse lover. You just love the fame and glory and trimmings that go with racing. And worse than that, you're cruel. Cruel and stupid, and those horses know it. Get out. Get out and don't come back. Well, you certainly told them where to get off. Oh, I'm as much to blame as anyone. I could see what was going to happen. I just wanted to show them that Lady could be a racehorse, to prove McIntyre and Charlie wrong. You did that all right. But what happens now? I don't know. After what happened today, she'll hate the race course and everything connected with it. And you won't be there to help her. OK. OK, enough sad faces. Come on, we eat. Tonight, I got plenty of lasagna. No, thanks, Mrs. G. Hey, I'm a boss here. When I say we eat, we eat. Now, Linda's elect has gone in. The only one we're waiting on is Blue Fire Lady. We've got a leading strap on her now. Three attendants behind, trying to link arms, getting her up. Oh, she's latched out there. The attendants have scattered. And I think the starter, Mr. Morrow, might have lost his patience. He's gone across to the phone now and ringing the... Chief Steward, now just stand by. Broadcast. Yes. Right. Thank you. Just stand by for a public announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, Blue Fire Lady has been withdrawn by the stewards, acting on advice from the starter, and bookmakers are advised to line their books, and an announcement regarding betting will be made after the race. Now, they're all in the stalls. Blue Fire Lady has been withdrawn by the stewards. She won't go through that again. The more they bully her, the worse she'll get. Your mount, Blue Fire Lady, put on a disgraceful exhibition at the barrier, Clay. In view of her past record, we have to seriously look at banning her. Do you have any comment to make? No, sir. This filly's a real crank. She's been a handful from the first time she set foot on a course. She showed ability at her first start, but she's been a big disappointment since. All right, thank you, Peg. Thank you, sir. Mr. Morrow? I consider this filly one of the worst cases I've seen in my experience as starter. In this race, we found it impossible to get her in, for I had no choice other than to withdraw her. Hmm. Mr. McIntyre, have you any questions you wish to ask the starter? No, I agree. My opinion, gentlemen, I don't think there's anything to be done to make this horse more tractable. 
I've done everything humanly possible, given every chance. Thankfully, I was able to get one race out of her, Mr. Peters. I now believe it'll be a waste of time to persevere. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Blue Fire Lady, who again put on a shocking performance before the start, was withdrawn by the stewards and has been banned from future racing. The stewards reported that despite several warnings, the trainer had been unable to cure the horse of her waywardness. Your Mr. Peters isn't going to be too pleased. I'm glad. At least you won't be beaten by Clegg anymore. You got a minute? Hi, Gus. Great to see you. How are you? Fine. You know that the uh, Phillies had it? Yes, I read it in the papers. It was Charlie. After you left, he couldn't do a thing with her. Peters is putting her up in the sales next week. What do you think will happen to her? Could end up anywhere. She'll certainly never race again. The sale's next week? Uh-huh. I've got to go. Thanks, Gus. Oh, by the way, I heard Peters mention a reserve of $1,000. Hi, Jen, what's up? Lady's being sold next week. Oh, what's the problem? I want to buy her. Buy her? Yeah, terrific idea. What are you going to do for money? Horses cost a fortune, don't they? Not horses that won't race. Well, count us in as a shareholder. How much do you need? Gus says there'll be a reserve of $1,000. She shouldn't make much more. A grand? <sighs> if I can find a way to rake up the money, the Bartlett's will look after her until I get a new job. Great. But what about the 1000 I've saved nearly 300. I thought, well, I was hoping if you had any money to spare, I'd pay you back. Look, Jen, you know, I'd give you anything I got, but the most I could rake up is the 50 or 60 bucks I get here. And Mrs. G's just as hard up. We can't let it be sold to just anyone. Yeah. What about your father? Dad, you know how he feels about horses. He wouldn't buy me a horse in a million years, especially not this one. Look, why don't you write to him again and explain the whole thing? It's worth a try, isn't it? I guess so. Oh, sorry, nothing today. Perhaps Monday. Monday will be too late. It had to be today or never. Never mind. Thanks. Word. But the sales today, what are you going to do? I'll have to go and have a look. I must find out what happens to her. I'll give you a lift. No, thanks. I'll take the tram. I've got to think things out a bit. Sure. See you. That poor girl's heart is broke. Not just the horse. She thinks her papa don't love her no more. He don't even answer her letter. What kind of man had Papa? I don't know, Mrs. G. But I'm going to find out. What you going to do, Barry? I think I'll have a word with our Mr. Gray. Jenny's Papa? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. The auctioneer reserves the right to refuse to accept any particular bid or bids. The auctioneer may fix an upset price and from time to time may fix the amount of rises in bidding. Except where lots are announced and being sold to dissolve a partnership, sellers may make one bid only and shall be <laughs> Looks as mad as a cut snake. Stick a flank rope on her, she'd buck a brand off. If she's wild enough, we could get her on the circuit. Get her for a grand? No one else would want a psycho case like that. Hello, lady. It's all right. I won't hurt you.
Not much of a crowd, Frank. Catalogue's not much good, though, John. Dog meat buyer over there will pick up the broken down ones. Rodeo fellas are looking for a lively type. All right, well, let's get on with it then. The following are the conditions of sale. The highest bidder at a seller's reserve shall be the buyer. Errors of description, whether as to soundness, condition, quality, fitness, pedigree, engagements. What the hell are you doing? Mr. Gray. Alan Gray? Yes? It's about your daughter. There isn't much time. Jenny? What's happened? Nothing's happened. But unless you wake up yourself, Jenny's going to suffer. How dare you threaten me? Who are you anyway? I know it's about this horse. She sent you to... She, she didn't send anyone. I came because I care about her. I came because she blames herself what happened to Blue Fire Lady. Look, why don't you just buy her the horse? I'm not interested. Now you can turn round and can Well, I've finished. Look, Mr. Gray. No one can bring back your wife. And no one can promise that the same thing isn't going to happen to Jenny. She's trying to save something she loves. I guess you understand that, don't you, Mr. Gray? Reference to a positive test does not... Mm. This is Lot 36, Blue Fire Lady, a winner at two years. As you can see, she's the daughter of a Melbourne Cup winner. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to announce that we consider she's only a breeding prospect. This filly is subject to a steward's ban for barrier behaviour. There she is. Where do we start, ladies and gentlemen? 500 for her, 5, 400. Get her started. Start her where you like, then. I'm in your hands. Start her anywhere. 5, 4, 300. <laughs> now, come on, let's be a little bit more serious. Come on, can I see a, a sensible start somewhere? Is there 300, 200 for it? Well, get us started. Start it where you like. In your hands now. Come on, can I see a, a sensible start somewhere? Is that a bid? One hundred dollars. A hundred dollars on bid here now. At one hundred to start. One hundred to bid. One hundred. Starting bid of one hundred dollars now. At one one and only bid of one hundred dollars on bid here now. At one hundred to start. One hundred to bid. One hundred dollars now. At one one and only bid of one hundred dollars on bid here now. Yes. One fifty. At one fifty against the starter now. At one fifty on bid. One fifty. At one fifty against the starter now. Three hundred on bid. Three hundred to bid. Three hundred now. Three hundred here on the left. At three hundred bid. At three hundred bid. Three hundred now on blue fire ladies. Three hundred to bid. Three hundred. Got three hundred now. No more. Four hundred. Four hundred over here. At four hundred to bid now. And this is where we should have started. 400 a bit here now at 400 now. At 400, no further at $400. I'm told he's reduced his reserve to $600, sir. Will you take her for that? We'll take her. <laughs> $600 done, all done. $600, you bought her, sir. And we're back in the sequence here, ladies and gentlemen, and this is a yelling filly by the great better boy performer, Century. Sold to Rodeo. Take it easy. Why don't we just go and have a word with him? No, I can't. Come on. Dad! Looks like we've just bought ourselves a horse.
When you're young 